Hey there, and welcome to another KidLit Chat. I'm your host, Brooke Van Sickle, as always, and I have the wonderful Holly DeBella McCarthy here. Hey, Holly, how are you? I am fabulous. Thank you for having me. Yes, thanks so much for doing this and for chatting with us. So for people who are watching who maybe never heard of you before, haven't read your books yet, uh, tell us a little bit about you and why you wanted to be a children's book author. Okay, well, my background, I'm trained as a special education teacher. Uh, my first 15 years in public education were spent teaching pre-K through grade two. Uh, then I became an administrator, the director of special education, and I was able to work with teachers and support staff, speech and language uh, people, uh, paraprofessionals and parents of students uh, with special education needs. So during those years, I also taught teacher prep courses to, um, to students studying um, how to be a great teacher at three different universities in Connecticut. So I have the full range pre-K through college. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's so yeah. fun. And then I retired after 35 years and I began to search for a new purpose. Um, I've always enjoyed writing for adults and that's where I started four years ago. I wrote two how-to craft books. Uh, oh. They're still very popular on Amazon, going strong, uh, but I miss teaching children. Um, I could have tutored, I could have subbed, but I wanted to make a bigger impact on generations of kids. Uh, so I also wanted to continue helping parents to understand the importance of pre-kindergarten skill development um, and how that correlates directly to school success. Yeah. So yeah, writing some children's of your books up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Writing writing children's picture books um, made the most sense to me given those goals. Um, and I knew I had the teaching part down solid, but I did need to learn the craft of writing for children, which by the way, I'm still learning every day, <laughs> I'm a variety of skilled people. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I write learning concept books um, and their books are often matched to the school curriculum. Yeah. Now well, you're always learning. You know what I mean? Like as a writer, I feel like we're always just getting better in our skills, like every single year. So it's never ending. It's always fun. But you have your character behind you, which is Dilly, and she's the star of your series. And you have three books currently and a coloring book, but then there's another one getting ready. So tell us a little bit about why you chose Dilly and um, what this series is about. When I was young, a young girl, um, my father was a Hartford, Connecticut police officer. And one day um, in his uh, duties, uh, he uh, stumbled upon two ducklings and no mama. Uh, and he brought them home to us and he handed one to my sister and he handed one to me. And um, I named mine Dilly, she named hers Dally. And uh, they were with us for, um, well, almost until the fall of that year. So spring through the fall and they grew up and, um, my father fashioned little harnesses and we took them for walks around the neighborhood. Uh, we introduced them to the wild, of course, uh, but Dilly really helped me in a lot of ways. At that age, um, three, almost four, I was very shy and I also um, had speech delays. So the only one that could understand me actually was my sister. I talked using only vowels. And um, Dilly really helped me grow my confidence because as I was walking her around the neighborhood, people would stop and ooh and ah and talk to me and ask me questions. And I had to practice my speech and I had to uh, figure out a way to get these people to understand what I was saying. Yeah. So uh, Dilly gave me um, a little boost of confidence in that way. So cute. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> but my inspiration for the Dilly and Friends series comes from all the people um, that I taught who needed to learn basic reading and basic math concepts in innovative ways um, and, and through play-based activities, whether they had a developmental delay, uh, intellectual delay, learning disability, their learning success came with repetition of concepts presented in multiple different ways. So mm -hmm. um, Dilly Duck Plays All Day is about a duck who needs to find friends so she doesn't feel so lonely. And the concepts embedded are counting one to 10, labeling social emotional vocabulary. Ah. And uh, Dilly Duck 
plans a parade, is about Dilly who must teach her colorblind beaver friend how to identify color using his other senses in order to uh, gather color for the Ducks Color Parade. So the concepts of color and five senses and hidden disabilities are all embedded in that book. Yeah, yeah. And that one was a bestseller. It just came out recently, which is huge. That's so exciting. I also just love the concept of colorblind in a picture book. So I don't know that that's ever really been done before. So I really liked that. But walk us through what it was like to be a bestseller and how that felt. That was a result of extensive self-education in the area of marketing. <laughs> um for before during and after the launch so i did a number of things to achieve that goal um i doubled the size of my launch team um i had kept a running record of everyone that i had left reviews for the previous year and when it was time i reached out to those people along with family and friends um and um i educated um i educated people in general on social media um, in-person events about the importance of leaving reviews. Yeah. Um, I, I use low tech things like postcards. Did you like this book? Leave a review with the QR code um, and the link. I updated my author page on Amazon. I added A plus content. If you're familiar on the Amazon sales page um, and this allowed me to add more images and more information um, directly related to how my books um, teach as they provide uh, a fun read. Um, let me see what else. I, I listed my um, ebook for sale uh, for a very low price um, right before the launch um, because consistent sales and consistent reviews um, help your book to, to go up in the, in the page rank. Um, and I ran ad campaign campaigns and that was another huge learning curve for me. Gotcha. Um, Amazon ads. Wow. Uh, I spent hours learning how to run successful Amazon ads. Um, so how did it feel? Boy, the hard work paid off. And then I'm proud that I have the knowledge now to repeat the process. I guess. Yeah, you can just use it every single book now and it'd be awesome. And, yeah. You know, learn new things because the algorithms are always changing. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And so is technology. <laughs> yes, yes, it's so true. Well, for anyone who's watching this, they might be like, well, that's really awesome. Like, I want to write a series. I think it'd be so cool to be a bestseller, like to have a second career, like once I'm done teaching or things. So what would be your number one recommendation to them or your biggest tip? Uh, my Author tips have changed and evolved, I guess, over the last four years. Um, I think at this point, my number one tip would be to develop a time management plan and one that works for you because we're juggling. We're constantly juggling. And in, my juggler has five balls. Um, my number one ball is writing. So if you're not writing, um, nothing else matters. Yeah. 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 So, so you need to write every day and whether I'm writing, um, uh, part of a story or I'm writing a blog, um, I'm making sure that I write every day. It may be 15 minutes. It might be four hours, but it's an everyday thing. My second juggling ball is, um, making time for author friendships. It is so critical to be a part of an author community and mm -hmm. to um, listen to other viewpoints and learn from other people. And um, one of the best things you can do is to give to others, give of your time and yourself and your knowledge to others yeah. uh, freely because uh, it will come back to you twofold. Mm -hmm. I think when you do that, um, my third juggling ball is um, learning new skills. We talked about that one. Um, and then, then there's the marketing ball and then there's the fifth ball, which is the very most important ball, which is, um, try, you need to carve out me time, time mm -hmm. for you, time, self, self, um, self, Im, Im, uh, importance and image and, uh, feeling good and self care and you need to carve out time for your family, of course, and we all have different responsibilities and some people might have two hours a day for the other four, four balls because the that big ball, that important one takes up so much of their time. 
Um, but it's just a matter of uh, the night before I do, I, I write the, the list of the four things and I kind of put in how much time I think I'm going to spend on each of those four. The idea being um, spend so, do something in each of those four areas every day. Um, and then I think um, by managing your time well, you have more time for that fifth ball, that, that all important family, friends, and yeah. me ball. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And celebrate your wins. Sometimes I feel like we get so focused on the end goal that we forget, like all the awesome accomplishments we make along the way. Like, yes, we're so busy checking things off of our list that we forget to celebrate. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so fun. Well, if someone wants to read your book or come meet you or see you at um, an event or something, do you have anything coming up or anything, you know, getting in the presses, anything you're working on right now? Uh, I have several local events coming up and I list those on my Facebook page um, and my me and my Instagram page. Um, I have four books in the works. The third uh, in the series, um, Dilly Duck Saves the Day, is with the illustrator. And I have um, another book about alphabet in the works and another book about self-acceptance. Um, and then I also have one book for first year teachers that I'm working on. So I see 2024 as a very transformative year, um, leaving behind some of the things that didn't work so well, um, things that I spent too much time on and didn't really get back what I needed to from it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started a new website, Book Chatter Press. And so my 2024 focus is going to be writing and um, a blog for parents. So I'm hoping people will take a look, maybe subscribe and, you know, yeah. follow me because, um, and, and feel free to reach out too. Uh, I'm happy to, to talk or, or help out in any way I can. Yeah. Yeah. You're busy. Oh my goodness. But guys, we put Holly's entire bio with the link to her website in the description too. So go and check it out. And you can connect with like her Facebook page and Instagram all off her website and go get her book. They're so great. We love reading them. Well, thanks Holly Thank for doing you. this and for taking the time. This has been wonderful. It has. It's been fun, Brooke. Thank you so much for having me.